after we finish, you will, we will uh, doing, be doing prayers again. What normally do you hear in prayers when people pray? Give me job, give me money, give me beautiful face, make someone healthy, right? Make the sick feel comfort, right? All this, well, these are, I'm not saying these are not important, but there's more important than this. You know why? Why? It's right here. I'm praying for my husband, I'm praying for my wife, I'm praying for my children, for my parents. Better health, better finances, job opportunity, relationship. <clears throat> it's like our main focus is to ask God to make this world a better place here. Right? You notice that? Yes or no? Yes. <clears throat> Everywhere you go, I, mean, I go places. Soon after this, I'll be in another, I'll be facing another audience. And I'm sure when we, when we pray, people will be praying about finances, job, you know, about better health, and this, all of this. Relationship. Even in BLT, we have stock, we, just, we have stock of petitions every week. A stock of petitions for job, for health, for family, for death, for all this. As if the most important thing is to feel good while, while living on earth. There's nothing wrong about it. Don't get me wrong. It's not wrong to pray for these things. But we must remember that our true destination is heaven. And to be with God, then we should long for it and pray for it every day. Have you heard anyone praying? Praying for heaven and to be with God forever? It's unthinkable, right? It's unheard of. So starting today, there will be a new petition from your lips to go to heaven. Because that's our destination. It's not here. That we will be that we will be in complete union with God so that we will spend our eternity with God in heaven. My next question to you is is heaven a place? Is it a place? Where's heaven? Where did the Blessed Mother where was she assumed? <coughs> where was the Blessed Mother assumed? Where is she now? Yeah, but where is heaven? <laughs> where did Jesus ascend? Where did Jesus ascend to? But where is it now? Where, where is he now? No one knows. <laughs> Can you tell me? Maybe he's in Pluto? Maybe he's in Neptune? Where's Jesus now? In heaven is everywhere. I heard that before. <laughs> let's see, let's move on. Is that heaven? <coughs> you have your notes, right? Your notes. Is that heaven? The Bible says blue firmament. Blue firmament. Looks like heaven. <clears throat> when you talk to a child, look at the heavens. Look, there's heaven. Where? I'll show you. I'll show you. Let's get your Bible. First, First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 9. What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man conceived, what God has prepared for those who love Him. Whoa. First book of John, chapter 3, verse 2. What we shall later be has not yet come to light, but we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He really is. The first one, 1 Corinthians, was by St. Paul. The second one by the Apostle John. 
And then there's uh, this discovery of mine, this Revelation 21 and 22. This is what St. John saw in his heavenly vision. He has this heavenly vision. Do you know that the book of Apocalypse is the vision of St. John? Did you know that Martin Luther and the Protestants wanted, wanted to remove the book of Revelation from the Bible? Because of this heavenly vision of St. John. <clears throat> Same thing with the book of James. Oh, that's, that would be for the other parish, not here. Anyways. This is what Revelation 21 says. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. What does that mean? This earth will pass away? And what is the first heaven? What is the first heaven? In order to inherit heaven, we have to die from this world. In order to go to heaven, we have to live here. We have to leave the earth. In other words, you cannot go to heaven without dying. You have to die first. Who wants to go to heaven? No, nobody. Okay. <laughs> okay, you want to go to heaven. Who wants to die? <laughs> Again, you have to die before you go to heaven, right? So you have to die first. That's what it says. You know what is the cost of heaven? Yeah. Everything. Everything. What does heaven cost? Everything. As long as you cling on to things on earth, you cannot go to heaven. What are some of the things you cling on? Money. Yeah, but there's a sum. You are in the world, but you're not. You are in the world, but yes. not of the world. Yeah, we will yeah. go to that later. Yeah, as Christians, we are in the world, but we are not of the world, but we are for the world. That's what it is. Now, it is interesting how strongly we cling to this world. How difficult it is for us to let go. Indeed, there's so many things in life that we so want to cling on to. So many things. We, we don't want to let go. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's common for me to hear people say, Oh no, not my child. I will die if and when my child goes. It's just your child. Your child is not yours. I say that many times, right? Your children don't belong to you. They belong to God. They have been entrusted by God to us to take care of, to educate, go through, make sure that uh, their future will be somehow secured. So that's what Revelation 21 says. The truth is, heaven comes only once earth passes away. Until earth passes away, there's no heaven. So where did the mother do? I mean, where did the Blessed Mother go? Where did the Blessed Mother go? Where did the Jesus ascend to? Yeah, but <laughs> we're trying to understand heaven. Are you with me so far? That's how you pray. Can you pray like that? You don't wonder. Where do you pray? <laughs> Revelation 21, we continue. And the sea was no more. Did, did you know that in the old, in the ancient world, the sea is a symbol of chaos? It's, they, they think that there's so much chaos in the sea. There are sea monsters there, there are wild, wild animals there. We often think of the sea as a place to go on vacation, right? We go to the beach. But the ancient world, the sea was a frightening place. Terrible storms, sea monsters. You remember there was they were in a boat and Jesus was sleeping. They had to wake him up. Don't you care? We're about to die here. 
The truth is heaven will not contain this desperate and inquiring chaos. Heaven will be a place of serenity and stability. All right, it's beginning to take shape. Heaven is stable. Heaven is serene. Do you understand that? Would you like to live in a place where it's stable? No storms, no hurricanes, no tornadoes, no earthquakes, no fires. And you don't grow old in heaven. You don't grow old in heaven. That's the sea. It's quite astonishing about this picture, but you see a heart shape. You see that? We move on with Revelation 21. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Can you imagine a city coming out of coming out of heaven? Heaven is described as the beauty of a bride on her wedding day. You remember when you get married, you were so beautiful? You remember that? You don't even want to look at me now. <laughs> remember that? You were so beautiful? You think? <laughs> the wedding day was truly a time of deep desire and excitement regarding the communion they would enjoy. And God permits us to think of heaven this way. Can you imagine when you were, you were so excited to see your husband, right? You were so eager. The cell phone, cell phone, where's the phone? The phone. He's going to call me. After 10 years, <laughs> you don't even want to see him in. The truth is, we will enjoy a deep and fulfilling communion with God. Not in a sexual way, of course, but even deeper, more joyful. What is the idea here? Communion, right? Communion. The Bible says two flesh become one. Book of Matthew. And God wants us to think of that union as very satisfying. In fact, more satisfying communion when we are with Him. That's what St. John is saying in the book of Revelation, chapter 21. And again, continuation. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people. And God Himself will be with them. Beautiful, beautiful. Avoid the tendency to be self-centered in our imaginings of heaven. <laughs> Remember I told you before, there, in, in my father's house, there are many mansions, right? Are you imagining your own mansion in heaven? With pearly gates, golden, golden what's it, driveways. So we imagine mansions, streets paved with gold, so happy seeing relatives and friends. Is there, do you have any relatives you want to see in heaven? Yes. Or there are some you don't want to see. <laughs> angels. Want to see angels? Yes. Many people leave God out of their description of heaven. That's not good. The reason I put this here is because when we think about heaven, we think about our ex, no, not ex, our deceased, our deceased. Wife, spouse, children, parents, right? We're, we're so in love with our parents, we want to see them in heaven. We want to see our relatives, our cousins, our brothers, siblings, children in heaven. I want to see my mansion. I want to see the gold paved road. And where's God? What happened to God? The whole idea of heaven is we want to be with God. It's not with our relatives. The truth is, heaven is to be with God. That should be highlighted. Heaven is to be with God. God and God alone will be the joy of our eternal home. And then this will be underlined. God will be our one desire. Our hearts will never tire of God and God alone. 